USTE is the ultimate tiny truck RC modeling event to come to of all time. Everything you could possibly want in the scale world is here today. We're known by everybody unless you live under a rock. The acronym USTE stands for the Ultimate Scale Truck Expo. We are not just scale trucks. <laughs> we have uh, a street class gallery, so that's anything that's on road. Uh, two wheel drive, four wheel drive, drift, F1 cars, rally cars. If it's more of an on road based platform, that's the street gallery that we, that we run. Uh, the biggest gallery on Friday would be tiny trucks. So four wheel drive trucks that we're you know, in the woods and we go four wheel driving through scale trails and stuff like that. But we have a little bit of everything now. If you haven't brought your trucks to the gallery, please do that now and then come back to the registration line. I love this and hate this because I have to find the nicest trucks and I have like 30 minutes to do it, which is basically an impossible task. Because like, I mean, just look at that. Look at those, like right in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight. Like, this is the impossible task to find the nicest trucks. It's, it's ridiculous and it gets worse every year. I mean, it gets better every year. I started this diorama in November, um, on and off. Um, I would say if I had to estimate how many hours I put into it, I probably put about two to 300 hours into it, I guess, which sounds like a lot now that I think about it. We've never done this before. We're new to the hobby. Um, and then we found out that there was this competition and decided to just try it out and see, see what would happen. It was kind of inspired by diorama builders and model train builders. And it's kind of like out of Georgia, Tennessee. So um, that's pretty much it. Everything is custom made. We only have a handful of 3D printed items. Like all the animals are 3D printed. Everything else other than that was all custom made. This is nitpicking everything to death. So if we're checking interiors, we're checking that it has a full depth floor, that it has shifters and keys, it's got uh, window cranks, the carpet's perfect, the interior has a full dash, maybe it's lit, there's actual gauges, like the competition is that stiff. The replica quality has to be perfect, as an example for interior. Engine bay is the same. Every single detail of the engine bay has to be there, or it isn't a contender, because the level of builds is that high at this event. There's Literally the best builders in the world are here and so it's hard competition. It's very hard to choose. Very, very hard to choose. Power windows. Is this for real? There's power windows happening right now. This is what USDE is all about. This is the world's best modelers coming to this show to showcase this kind of activity right here. This is incredible. And the uh, pop-up tent, the rooftop tent is working. We have been at USTE since the very beginning. And we were very pleased to be involved with USTE right from the very beginning as the truck gallery sponsor. USTE was not my idea at all. Uh, that belongs to Corey Verne, a friend of mine. He's my real life superhero. He's a tactical rescue, fire, EMS, paramedic, been on the force for around 16, 17 years now. Um, and he was tired of going to comps, competition, 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 everywhere, comps. He's like, we need to have something based around the builder of these cars, these models, and not about who can pull off the craziest line without rolling over or go up this steep of an incline or down or, or whatever that may be. And I was like, yes, we're gonna do this. <laughs> saving the planet one small forest at a time. These little guys here just really kind of set the uh, set it apart. Just greening it up and making it look real and you know, like you're actually somewhere, just a tiny somewhere. A little 
tedious here too, but there's there's a shelf that's maybe 18 or probably 24 inches down right there. It's a flat shelf, so I have to park the waters, <laughs> sink the bucket, hide the hose, and, uh, and go to work on the top side. But all the stacking happens up here, not in the water. We have our safety string in case something goes wrong so I can attempt to get it out without getting back in. You know, you gotta think of these things. trails are like nowhere. Um, it's not comp oriented at all. The trails are specifically designed for really scale, really nice trucks. You're not going to be at risk of rolling it over, or flipping down a hill, anything crazy like that. It's, it's scale driving, like you're off wheeling class three to five trails maybe, you know. Not, not a two track, but you're not hardcore crawling and mud bogging either. You're just having fun with your four wheel drive. Very much the same as with how the trails are done. There's miles of them, I think there's nine or 10 this year. And it's literally miles of trails, probably five to 10 miles at least of trails. If you come and you wanna do every trail, it's almost impossible. You have to start Friday morning and you will finish Sunday right before the end in order to get them done. Cause it takes that long, there's so many. There's amazing bridges, right? We've got suspension bridges that are built. One's 90 feet long as I recall. And there's metal truss bridges. There's one year Corey Verne and I were out and we built a bridge out of sticks and twine like you'd see in like the jungle. So we were literally breaking and cutting up sticks and then tying them together with twine that looked kind of like vines, you know, and it's all rustic jungle style bridge that makes a bend around a hillside that slid out. And every year more details like that get added. And they don't go away. It's not like you build the stuff and it's here one year and it was that year. It's here every year in perpetuity once it's done. The goal is not to disturb the flora or fauna on the rocks because green things like this little thing takes a long... Get that out of here! <laughs> what are you crazy? <laughs> this is it. See how loose and sloppy they are? They will about be not loose and sloppy by the time you fill all this in. Rob is the master of rock stacking. Usually we all get it started and he comes through and fine tunes it and finishes it. He can get them locked right in place so it gets up a hill easy, but you're still getting some suspension articulation and whatnot. The, the details are insane. There's houses and uh, windmills and barns. There's so much stuff out there that is just amazing, especially if you're into getting scale shots, either video or stills. You know, you go out with your buddies and you go, oh, this spot looks sweet. We're gonna be driving by this and doing this. So someone sets up, you know, gets down on the ground like we do and sets up and you get all your trucks going by and you see all the suspension work and everything. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's the most lifelike experience driving an RC car, especially if you're videotaping, even the little bushes and stuff behind your car. When you take that photo, it looks so real. That's what I really love about it. And they manicure these roads. Nobody does that at any events. They'll make a course, but nobody manicures a road, sets up little bridges and little gates and guardrails and that kind of thing. Um, it's just an awesome experience. So if I can get it to look like this, how it's nice and clear, that's what I want. I just want it to be clean and clear so that we get the best possible pictures we can. rock to just fill that in so it's right at water level that'll look good like again this is going to be crystal clear in the morning so you will see those rocks sitting there look at that not too shabby huh then i'll get some smaller rocks and i'll just put rocks like that So first year of UST was 2017. 
Um, our vendor row was super, super small. Like we had maybe 12 or 14 vendors. Um, and we had some big names that, that helped us out there, um, but it was a really, really small vendor row. It's definitely a learning year. And then we went to, to now, seven years later, eight working years later, and we're the largest ground-based modeling event in the world. Well, our, our goal is to have a whole bunch of vendors come here to showcase their products and interact with their consumers. And we have been called the SEMA for tiny trucks. That is what we do. I've traveled to so many events and I've never been to an event where there's more than 10 to 20 vendors. This event holds the most vendors in our industry in any, any place we've been to. We travel all over the US, as you guys know. The, the amount of people that we actually get to meet face to face um, is incredible. Through this weekend, we have tuned and tweaked, um, replaced, taught, um, so the education is right there in front of their face. If they choose, um, we don't sell, we're just here to support, and that's usually how it works for us. Within this industry, it's important that, uh, that we partner and we collaborate uh, with similar uh, level of, of manufacturers, and this gives us the opportunity to, to meet and greet and talk and build those relationships. And with that, it helps our business grow um, within the industry. Um, so touching the consumer is one thing, but industry affiliation and, and making those acquaintances is just as big for us. As a magazine, these are partners we've had for 40 years. That we, we were out here and there's new partners. Every day there's a new vendor that, that shows up and they're, they're telling you what they got. And it's innovative and great designs and, and new products out there for the consumer, our readers. So as, as again, as a magazine, as a media company, as a vendor, this is the place to be to introduce yourself. Whether you're a new brand or an established brand, you gotta be out here to make sure everyone sees who you are. And and you get to rub elbows with the people that, that created the hobby. It's like a gigantic 2,000 person family, really, you know? And so every year we get to see people that we wouldn't otherwise get to see. We're from Pennsylvania, so driving down to Florida, it's 1,100 miles. And some of these people we only get to see every, you know, once a year. Sometimes we catch them at a different event, but this event is so big, we get to see everybody that we're used to seeing on social media. You know, we talk to them on Facebook, they're on our YouTube channel, and so we get to put a face to the to the name on there, hang out with people, shake hands and see people, plus the amount of vendors that are here. We have a hobby shop, we are vendors that manufacture stuff, but we also have a hobby shop. So the amount of other stuff that we can learn about to carry in our hobby shop is just amazing. That you won't, you know, you don't necessarily get to know what it is until you hold it in your hands and be like, ah, I can sell that. So the Ultimate Scale Truck Expo is not like any event we've been to. You know, we've traveled across the country to other events, but this is the one that we'll make it a point to to come back to every year. The platform is a little bit different where they have the huge vendor row and you have all the owners of the businesses um, here to talk with the people and meet face to face. And just the whole concept was almost a, a different event concept that the industry hadn't seen before. You know, people that aren't even aware that this is an industry, it's almost like come to this event and your brain will be blown seeing all the scale accessories, all the different builds. And the funny thing with Scalar Feb is our, our bumpers and rock sliders are almost so scale that we have people that have never heard of the RC industry buying it for their real Jeeps. And so there's, you know, a whole RC world that some people don't know about. And so when you, even when you come to this event as a spectator, you, it, your mind is blown and your world is open to all the possibilities. And there's a bunch of different types of events, you know, so it's not just the scale crawler trails, there's vintage buggy racing, there's monster truck events, 124 scale, so, so much to see at USTE. Vintage buggy, two-wheel drive winner, best of show, right here. Best show winner in the four-wheel drive class. Very nice. Very, very nice. Thank you. More hardware, bro. <laughs> Winners were for how proper vintage it was. Repop or old, doesn't matter. Obviously, if it's original, that's better. And how detailed it was. Uh, my favorite out of the whole bunch was that RC10, but I'm also a giant associated nut. 
but he had little things like the old Edinger sway bars on the front and rear that are hard to find, seized aluminum wheels, little things like that. So that was shoeing instantly. Uh, thank you. Good job. Thank Congratulations you. to everyone who contended thank today you. in the Vintage Buggy Gallery. We are going to open the Remote Control Hobbies racetrack here in about a half an hour. So I gotta go charge batteries. Our Vintage Buggy uh, track this year is 40 foot long and 30 foot wide and we have an 18 inch perimeter around the outside of the track. It's loose, sifted topsoil. That's what the track is. Cause I don't know, back when I was a kid, we didn't have clay tracks and we certainly didn't have carpet tracks, right? We went out there with a rake and a shovel and started throwing jumps together and that was the track. So to try to keep with that theme, our vintage buggy track is just dirt, it's topsoil. It gets dry, it's dusty, there are rooster tails everywhere. None of the cars can turn because they're all pre-1989, right? That's what I grew up with. That's fun. None of them handle good. Even Nick Barber, when he tells you how good his RC10 is, it still doesn't turn. <laughs> Drive safe on the turn. Turn. Uh, it took everything I had <laughs> and a lot of luck. <laughs> I can't believe you took my crowns. <laughs> Seven years of winning and he took it. <laughs> Well, the drift guys were doing quote unquote scale before any uh, truck four wheel drive thing started 10 years ago. The drift guys were killing it with scale. Right over here, we, we put this on a little experience uh, for USTE this year. Uh, we have a eight by 14 layout. It's a PVC vinyl. It's a full print right here. There's no seams on the track and uh, it, it slides phenomenal. We did a little bit of uh, aesthetic in, uh, in complementing with the little barriers and some uh, small greenery, but it definitely uh, slides beautiful. We've been having a great time and uh, it's, it's great to just have a mobile setup here in, in the middle of, uh, of the woods. We've been coming to USTE now for just four years. The first year I was uh, uh, in attendance as a spectator, not knowing what to expect when I, uh, I arrived here and uh, it was absolutely and I was in awe I was shocked and uh, ever since we've uh, just uh, made it made it a point to come back each and every year and uh, here we are on, on vendors row enjoying it uh, from uh, both perspectives uh, now the drift scene has gotten a lot more scale for years they have been gravitating towards that um, we are definitely um, you know here implementing drift at USCE we're trying to uphold that standard of, of scale that is expected at USC so Street Break comes out, puts on a phenomenal event. Uh, these guys have bodies that have equivalent uh, uh, amount of time in some of them than, uh, than you see on trail. And uh, yeah, it's definitely taking a route. I think uh, very soon you'll see a, a very um, a prospering scale side of drift that you, uh, you, know, you haven't expected from the drift guys. But uh, yeah, it's, and I think all this is influencing it as well, you know? I got the best in show for the street class. My three window Model A, kind of classic style hot rod. <laughs> I run RC every day, YouTube channel, build rat rods and custom dioramas. And uh, the reason I come out is for my viewers. A ton of people come by, I set up my scale garage this, this weekend, I let people bring their trucks and take pictures in it. So just meeting the people that I talk to online and seeing everybody's rigs and people coming up and, you know, I helped them do this and they built this because of something I showed them and that's, that's what it's about, just connecting with people. What I do on YouTube is I'm not trying to show you how to do it. I'm, I'm just sharing information, I'm sharing knowledge. But out here, they actually have the classes in person. Um, I've taught a, a weathering and patina class for the last four years. And I mixed it up a little bit this year. I did a, a scale garage building class with a little paint and weathering. Just talking about some of the methods of working with woods and things like that. So um, I actually attended a class today or yesterday for airbrushing. I've always wanted to airbrush and I've always been kind of hesitant to try it. So it, they have that stuff out here. It's, it's a great resource. Anybody that wants to learn, there's little kids up there that sit there for every class. And it's, you know, that's the future of the hobby. We've got to teach them. 
So as much effort as we put into the trails, um, that pales in comparison to the classes and the, the teaching and training that we put on that as far as I'm aware, no other event in the world does. We were the first. We did that year one, seven years ago. That will always stay, whether you wanna uh, learn uh, the basics of how to solder things, put together your own LED lights for your, your trucks, the basic stuff. Um, but then we also go into a photography class. Um, you know, we have a waterproofing class. TIG welding. We have a fabricator that has worked on some of our past gallery winners here. He's coming this year to put on a class. So if you don't know, just show up to the class and spend 20 minutes or 30 minutes. They'll show you how to do it. Then we do a, a, a semi-truck, kind of a semi-truck rodeo thing. Uh, Jose from down in Orlando brings a whole setup and uh, he runs that and they do uh, parking, parallel parking, back and in, uh, the whole nine. And there's a semi-truck gallery. So, you know, those guys are to the nth degree with the details on their trucks and quadruply chromed exhaust stacks and, you know, all full working lights, you know, and uh, the headache racks on the back and smoke stacks that actually smoke. And I mean, the list goes on and on and on. It's, it's pretty crazy. I use the corner bead molding for drywall, the outside corner, yep. cut the corner out, and then use that as a template, and then I just punch them all out nice. by hand, one at a time. So every single one of these rings, the piece that you're going to run, for all every single hole, you're going to punch out by hand. Okay? Those, Those are the little, little fine details that make these trucks here at USC. Functioning hood, full motor, it's all about making it look scale correct. Best to show. This, this out here, he's got one of the most killer trucks out here. So I'm glad to see the level of detail you guys are stepping up to because you guys made it very hard to make these decisions. You look underneath here and see, you can see all the little scale welds. Okay, so this truck right here is best detail and best of show. So let's give him a big round of That's who we draw to this event. The, the best of the best builders, the best modelers, and they bring all of their really, really nice toys that are thousands and thousands of dollars worth to come drive on these trails and to go sit in on our classes. And if they're really, really lucky to win one of our gallery uh, trophies, which is pretty beyond coveted at this point. Yeah, <laughs> Arts Racer right Arts now. Arts Racer. It's a little nerve wracking. But it's it's worth it. We've won the last several years, yeah. so it's like <laughs> we put our heart and soul into what we're doing, and so we're on edge right now. <laughs> yep. People now realize that you can attach your modeling skills and the detail work that you so much love about modeling, you can now attach it to the radio control side of the hobby. And those things can be rewarded in a GCM gallery at an event like USDE. Yeah, just making sure it's authentic, uh, detailed oriented. Uh, we saw some with like uh, Leaf debris inside the engine like on, bay. You on know, the air filter. Yeah, the it's just spark plug wires, dipsticks, dip uh, uh, just engine, authentic, like exhaust. Just uh, as realistic as possible. Yeah, and and the competition's stiff, as we said. So oh, it's amazing. This we're running year. out of time, and we're having a hard time doing it, but we're having a great time doing it. The trails at USTE open at one o'clock. That's right now. Unless you have a truck here that you know for a fact is in contention, have fun on our trails. Please tread lightly, pick up your trash, be courteous to your other drivers around you. However, if you are still in contention and you know that these guys are staring at your trucks, please leave them down. table to win a trophy at USTE uh, it's a it's a compliment like no other compliment uh, the the best builders I would consider in the world uh, come to USTE to display and to be selected and, and picked for the time that you invested into that build is it, it's a unique experience it's heart you know heartwarming uh, it's just a the greatest compliment ever.
these guys, this is what they do for a business. This is what they do for a living. It's all scale model trucks. And there's gonna be something about your truck that just stands out to them, that wows them, that's gonna innovate them. And when they choose it and you're selected, it's, it's huge. It's, it's a really big deal. You can share that everywhere. Like, I'm a finalist and a winner for UST. Guys are putting thought and hours and hours of modeling into these. It's just incredible. I see a couple of things blending now. The uh, availability of microelectronics has opened up a whole new window of scale modeling. I saw a truck the other day at the gallery with power windows. We're talking about microelectronics, micro motors. The smallest components have to be done to create power windows on a door that's this big. That's some new technology that's available. You can now get tiny motors, tiny electronics for great prices, and these quality builders, they're taking the time to put those things together. We're automatically opening hatches and doors on vehicles. It's been incredible. And the other thing that I've seen, the second thing, is the quality of the paint. We used to use rattle can paints, and that was almost all we had, and now there's a lot of paint manufacturers that are putting out super high quality paints that we can use for airbrushing, automotive quality, clear coats, and some of the best looking finishes that I've ever seen in modeling, and I've seen it here this year at Ultimate Scale Truck Expo. This is my favorite part of the whole thing is this, and then it's also the most complicated, demanding, hardest thing to do, to try to pick the best of the best. I'm gonna give the awards full size and tiny size. USDE is by far the world's premier scale model truck expo. There is no other place that I've seen on earth where you can collect the best builders in the world in one place. And the way that you can tell that is by even just looking at the pictures. The pictures and the videos that come out of USDE showcase the best built RC models that I have ever seen in the world. And the builders want to bring them here. This is the place where you can meet like-minded people who are doing the most authentic model replicating builds. Everybody who's putting their time and effort into these incredible builds, they want to showcase them. They want to showcase them to people who will appreciate that amount of modeling skill. And so they bring them to the Ultimate Scale Truck Expo. This is it. This is the top of the chain. This is the place where the best builders come to bring their stuff. And they come from very far. We've had people here from overseas, there's people here from the opposite side of the country. There's no expense spared. People want to be able to showcase these builds and so they bring them down to this event. This is the premier modeling event ever for scale trucks. We have the opportunity to pick a best of show from the GCM team. Dana and I go through the show field and find one truck that has everything. And in this case, the winner goes to Darren the Mongolar. Everyone can come and learn something. No matter how long you've been in this, there's always something to learn here at UST, and you go out a better person. They show up with what they think is a super detailed model, and some of them are really nice, except they're not as nice as the guys that win the trophies. And you know what they do? They get fired up. They go home, and I've had multiple emails hey, I'm starting my build for next year right now. They go home, they buy whatever components they need, and they spend 12 months building a truck to bring out to this show for the gallery. That's what they do. And that makes me the most excited. Because <laughs> then I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see what they come back with, you know? And uh, the, every year the builds have gone from okay to super top shelf. I mean, ridiculously high-end, detailed builds. Every year it gets better. What people take away most is what you can do with an RC.